programs for the Cambridge machine were written out using a simple code. They were converted to punched tape and then fed into the machine. Scientists from many disciplines soon learned how to prepare programs. These massive number crunchers were so fast that one such machine could do the work of 10,000 human computers with calculators. One physicist worked out that three such machines could do all the scientific computing needed in Britain. But as scientists became familiar with the machine, they discovered that it opened new possibilities. The availability of computers was essential to the development of new sciences, like radio astronomy, which generated masses of data. And in many other branches of science, now huge calculations could be done at speed, the impossible became possible. Soon it was realized there would never be enough computing capacity. The scientists were interested in the computer mainly as a tool to widen their horizons. But newspaper headline writers wanted to believe there was more to these machines than that. And they had good authority. Alan Turing, a brilliant mathematician, always saw computers as much more than mere number crunches. The vision Turing had of computers even led him to design one. Pilot Ace, the only more or less complete machine that survives from that era, was based on that design. But Turing hoped to use it for more interesting things than arithmetic. Which was a long time ago. But this was where computers started, electronic computers started. This is one of the first stored program computers. It was designed by a man called Alan Turing, who was in fact a British mathematician who was involved in cracking codes in the war, in the Second World War, cracking the German codes, yes, in the war. Turing's ideas and computers went back even further than the war. In 1936, he had published a paper on an abstruse mathematical problem. In that paper, written a full decade before computers were built, he wrote about computing machines and demonstrated theoretically that one such machine could, in principle, do any logical task a human could do. Turing realized there was nothing special about computing numbers. It was just one step-by-step -step logical process which manipulated symbols according to certain rules. But there were others. Code breaking, for example. It took symbols, usually letters, and transformed them to unscramble a message. If manipulation of numbers could be mechanized or done by a machine, then said Turing, so could manipulation of letters. When war broke out, he had a chance to test his ideas. But the work done at Bletchley Park by Turing and the other code breakers was so secret that its existence would not be revealed until the 1970s. The encoding methods used by the Germans in the Second World War relied on machines. Enigma, the best known, encoded the day-to-day -day traffic of the forces. This was Turing's main area of responsibility. But the most secret of all the messages, including some from Hitler himself, were sent from teleprinters attached to another machine. Called the Lorenz, it had shifting wheels which scrambled the letters in a pattern that was continually changing. Alan Turing worked out one of the logical strategies the code breakers used to attack it. But the task was hopeless. It was much too slow to be useful. The only possibility was to build the rules of their strategy into a machine. Colossus, an extraordinary construction, was a partial embodiment of the computing machine Turing had imagined. It was electronic and therefore very fast, and it computed not numbers but code letters. Colossus began operating in 1943, the same year as work on ENIAC began. But whereas the ENIAC's vacuum tubes did arithmetic, Colossus's circuits carried out the logical steps of a code breaker. Colossus broke so many top-secret messages that unlike ENIAC, it undoubtedly did help to win the war. It had a less obvious impact than ENIAC on the development of the computer, but it confirmed what Turing had always believed, that a computer was not simply an arithmetic machine. 
Because of the secrecy surrounding Colossus, Alan Turing's remarkable insight into what a computer could be has only recently been recognized. Turing had this extraordinary, uh, almost uh, unique obsession with looking at a problem as though it was the first time that anybody in the world had ever looked at that problem and taking it completely fresh. There was a small group of us who came very much under his spell in terms of the vision that he had for what would be possible after the war to develop uh, computing machines, which in itself was an amazing idea, but not just for numerical calculations, but for symbolic non-numerical uh, calculations which could simulate the processes of, of logical human thought and above all of machine learning. But unfortunately for Turing, the response of young colleagues like Donald Mickey was not shared by the establishment. Having devoted great effort to designing his ace, he realized it would never be used as he had hoped. He wanted to simulate human thought, but the machine was destined to spend all its time performing scientific calculations. When it became entangled in bureaucracy, he left in disgust. Moving to Manchester University, he had a chance to try out a few of his ideas for non-mathematical projects. In 1954, this remarkable genius committed suicide following a prosecution for homosexuality. So he never saw which of his dreams came true. He never lived to see that Eckert and Morkley's far-fetched scheme to start a computer business would end up launching an industry. He never saw how engineers were able to shrink the main circuitry of a computer and put it onto a single chip that you could fit on your hand. He never saw that one day computers would play chess better than all but the very best human players. Today, computers are, as Turing foresaw, universal machines. Their uses are limited only by our imaginations. You know what these little bottles are? No? Today, children look back at the machines of Turing's time in astonishment. Computers are such common objects, used for so many things that it's hard for them to understand that once all people did with them was compute. <laughs>